Hey, I'm Jacob, and I play bass for Russia Fools. At 12 years old, I had my first sexual relationship, and that's young. I didn't even know, you know, what, you know, purity was. I wasn't in church. It distorted my view of what a relationship should be, what a biblical relationship should be as a man and just as a human being. I mean, it, it intensified that struggle to stay pure from that point on for the rest of my life. And uh, I mean, I'm proud to say I did it, but it was, it was hard every single day of my life from that point. Making that one mistake, you know, when I was younger, it, I mean, I'll always have that with me no matter what. I scared to death on my wedding day. I absolutely petrified because my wife's sitting there walking down the aisle being a clean, pure, purified person. She's waited her whole life for me and I I can't say that. I was bawling my eyes out because you know, it, I'm pure now through Christ, but I mean, I did something that I can never take back to make myself, you know, as ready as she was for that day. Teenagers who are easily influenced grab onto the wrong thing and not have a real sense of what's right and what's wrong. My parents are great, you know, don't get me wrong, great parents, but we just, I don't know if it was uncomfortable for them or, you know, but we never actually had the talk. I just kind of got knocked around and learned and we just want to sweep it under the rug and it's become like the thing you don't talk about, the, the hidden secret, the hidden sin that you're not supposed to discuss with anybody. It's a bad word and like, you know, this is, Something you don't do, no, sex is a beautiful thing, absolutely. I mean, God created it for our enjoyment when we were married. And I think people have become uncomfortable talking about it because they just get this misconception that somehow sex is evil and stuff, but no, it's just misused. We're so scared of what people think of us and too prideful to let people help us that we decided like, you know, we can deal with this on our own, think you can deal with this on your own. And in fact, God says you can't deal with this on your own, you can't fix yourself and even you and God by yourself you have to get people to help you and support you and acknowledge your sin. You know I could still do this and make it and everything was going to be okay eventually. Always hope for you and there's always, I mean God's forgiven you if you've asked for it. The church has got to quit being ignorant to the fact that their own body of believers is hurting and needs help. They have thought that maybe if we just leave the subject alone that maybe things will fix itself, they'll learn how to do it the right way. When truthfully, the only way to ever teach them how it's properly done is to come right out front and say it and have talks with them and show them, look, this is the biblical way of having a relationship. This is the biblical way of talking about things. First Corinthians 6, 18 says, flee from sexual immorality. For all other sins are out of the body, but sexual immoral person sins against his own body. The best thing you ever can do is just sit down and be honest with your children. I'm Jacob Chestnut. I play bass for Russia Fools, and I'm so blessed to be with Freedom Begins here.